Hey friends, this is James Forster from London, Kentucky. Been asked by a lot of people to try to bring a short sermon on Facebook. I don't know how this is going to go. It's uh, me and Sweetie Pie, and when we work together, that's kind of dangerous. But I'll tell you what to do. If you want to, turn your Bible over to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Peter writes to the Christians, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he will exalt you. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He says, throw everything, all the anxieties and all the problems that we're going through, throw them on him, Jesus Christ. Why? Because he cares for you. Jesus is not on vacation. He's not gone somewhere off taking a nap. He's still looking after you. He's still looking after me and the United States of America and the whole wide world. He's still just as powerful as he ever was. Sometimes when we're going through a lot of things that we don't understand and we've never been through before, we get a little scared and we get a little anxious, as so many of us have been. But we need to stop and remember, God is still in charge. He has turned all the authority and everything over to his son, Jesus Christ, they working together can conquer everything. So we're going to talk about that just for a few minutes. Remember, friends, no matter what, God and Christ care for you. How do I know they do that? How can I figure that out on my own? Well, I can read in my Bible, Romans 5 and verse 8, God commends or shows his love towards us, that's me and you, and that while we were yet or still sinners, Christ died for us. He still died for us. Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about? Hebrews 2 and 9, he says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that, notice this now, that by his grace of God should taste death for every person. Why would I want to be worried? Why would I want to be scared to death? Why? If I'm a Christian, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't have any problems at all. You should say, whatever happens, Jesus will take care of me. That should be the attitude we have. God cares. He gave us the gospel, the good news, 2,000 years ago. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, or wherein are you living in this. Isn't that wonderful? Romans 1, 16 and 17, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What is it? He says it's the power of God. Has it lost its power? Does it have to go through Washington, D.C.? Does it have to go through New York or someplace such as that to have power? No. He has all the power that he had before and that he has now. When he spoke, the world was going to exist. When God talks, you better start listening. God cares enough about us that he gave us salvation. We were separated from God. We had no hope in the world. But Paul writes in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he goes on to say, How can they call unless somebody tells them? So that's what we're trying to do today. Second Peter 3 and 9 said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as man counts slackness. But is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He does what? He says he wants us to do what? Do what he says to do. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, God and Jesus, who have all, have gave all to be, would have all to be saved, and they have, that they might have the knowledge of the truth. You got it? Read your Bible. You ain't got nothing else to do. You're staying home. You've always said, if I had free time or spare time, I'd read my Bible more. Well, you've got it now. You can sit down and read it all you want to, as long as you want to. The psalmist says in Psalms 23 and 2, 
says that he leads me beside the still waters. Notice what he says. He leads me beside the still waters. He doesn't follow me to the still waters. He leads me to the still waters. He doesn't push me. He doesn't shove me. He leads me there. Jesus Christ is still in that business of leading us today. He's yelling, come on, let's go. He's ahead of us. He's in front of us. He's preparing it for us. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that hear us say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. That's what Jesus says. Revelations 22, verse 17. John 5 and verse 40 says, And you will not come to me that you might have life. What's the problem? We're not doing and we're not going to the right source. In Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who are we going to get the rest from? From Jesus Christ. It is not going to come somewhere else. It's got to come from him. Remember, He's in the front of us. He's clearing the way. He's showing us the way. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in anybody but Jesus Christ. That's who you need to trust in. That's who you need to have your confidence in. You know, in a short time, the people that's running this country, they won't be running this country anymore. They won't be here anymore. They'll be going off into something else. There'll be somebody else elected doing things that they're doing today. But today, you can understand, Jesus Christ was the same as he was yesterday. He's the same thing today, and tomorrow he'll be the same thing again. He's going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. He said he'd take care of us. We have got to believe that. 2 Corinthians 11 and 13. But I fear, Paul says, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. What's wrong with us? We're forgetting. We're forgetting during this time of our life things that we've never seen or experienced before. We need to remember not to let the devil tell us all this stuff about how bad it is. and We we will get through these things. Matthew 11 and 25, at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babies. Listen, we need to stop and remember, God is still there. Jesus Christ is still there. You know, Years ago, I read an article about a man that worried so much. He decided that he just couldn't stand it any longer. It was driving him crazy, worrying all the time. So he decided what he was going to do. He put an ad in the, back in them days, in the paper, but now it'd be on Facebook, I guess. I'll pay you a salary of $200,000 a year if you'll come and worry for me. The man read that, and he took the job. He went and asked him, he says, well... I want to take that job. I'll I'll worry for you for $200,000 a year. That's a good deal. I'll take that job. Now, what do you want me to worry about? He said, well, the first thing you need to worry about is when am I going to get that $200,000 so I can give it to you? That was a big worry. It's kind of like that in life. We worry about all this stuff and all this stuff. We need to stop. And we need to thank God and Jesus Christ. We got a home, we got a family, we got people that love us, and we love them. We got brothers and sisters in Christ, all those things that we have. And think about that just a little bit. 1 John 2, 25, and this is a promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. Even eternal life. You know, if you don't have God in Christ, you can't have eternal life. That's sad. Titus 1 and 2, And hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Wow, what about that statement? God cannot lie. He promised if we do what he says to do, he will give us eternal life. God told the children of Israel in the days of old, If you will do what I tell you to do, 
I will take care of you. I will protect you. I will feed you. And I will lead you to the land of the milk and honey. And you know what? God did everything he said he's going to do. That's the same God that we're serving today. He hasn't lost anything. He's still God. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 10, But now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He's saying what? He says, there's a better time coming. And that's what we got to look at, the better time that's coming in the future. How much, the question is, how much time do you have how much do you care about God? Do you care enough about God to do what God tells you to do? You know, Jesus, we talk often about the love that God had for Jesus, but how the love of Jesus, how much did he love God? It says in Hebrews, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all of them that obey him. Maybe you're not a Christian today. Maybe you've never obeyed the gospel. Well, the Bible says you have to hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And then you have to believe it. If you don't believe it, it's just something that you've read or heard about. It doesn't mean anything. Jesus says, unless you believe that I am he, you will, you will die in your sins. And if you are a person that does those things and you're willing to repent of your sins, change your life, rededicate to the di di direction that you're going into, and you're willing to confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God in front of people, in front of say this, Jesus Christ changed my life. Why do I not do the things I don't do anymore? Because I gave my life to Jesus. And being willing, to, when, the, when, that made, when that confession is made, to be buried with him in baptism for the remission of your sins. Jesus Christ says, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not will be cut off or condemned. My friends, that's in your Bible. You can read it for yourself. Don't believe me. Don't trust in anybody but God and his holy word. That's who you've got to look to. We would love at this time to be able to stand up and sing a song and invite you to come. But because we're on Facebook or wherever we're at, we can't do that. We would invite you to find somebody that you know that's a Christian and talk to them about it. I'm sure they could help you in any way. We love you. Hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed it myself. Keep your keep faith. Never give up. Amen.